there isn't anybody in aviation who doesn't agree how dangerous ice is. The only difference being the extent of the uh, experience a person has and how badly they've scared themselves in the past. But the obvious question is, how do you evaluate and show people how to deal with icing configurations of various aircraft? Let's face it, going out and doing it, the real thing is way too dangerous. Using uh, research from NASA Glenn, Burl just may have a solution for you. Well, Burl Flight Research was started about 34 years ago. Uh, primarily, we were a uh, developed high fidelity uh, math models for airplanes uh, and other vehicles, but primarily airplanes. We uh, developed software for simulation uh, and uh, we do whatever it takes to get the data. We do, we do wind tunnel testing, we take flight data, uh, we work with any data source that we have to, to, to try to get uh, a very high fidelity math model all the way through normally way past stall up into the places where you can get departures and spins, we can simulate all those. So we're, we're very experienced in, in doing that type of work. What we brought was uh, NASA Glenn's icing research trainer that we developed for them. Uh, this was done under uh, uh, aviation safety program. NASA Glenn Research Center has, has an icing research branch that's been working over many, many years now to develop uh, training tools and, and information tools for pilots uh, to educate them how to notice when they've got ice on the airplane and what to do about it. Uh, this is the one of the, the latest things that, they, that we developed for them. Uh, this is based on wind tunnel data. We did an extensive series of wind tunnel tests to measure the, the effects, uh, force and moment data of the icing on the airplanes. From that, we made a uh, math model that we can fly the clean airplane or the airplane with ice and put together this simulator for them which is portable so they can take this to different venues and do training. They've used this at the uh, University of Tennessee Space Institute uh, for training uh, pilots there. Uh, they have a short course on icing that they offer generally at least once or twice a year and NASA brings it there. They've also had it out to the National Test Pilot School for training the pilots there. This is what we have. This is the reason it was developed, was uh, so that they could actually let pilots experience what the effects of icing were on, the, on this type of, these types of airplanes. Uh, because you don't really want to experience it the first time in flight when you're on an approach. And there's very little training being done in icing. And this is really the first uh, icing simulator. Most of the trainers, they put uh, some additional weight and drag on it. Uh, this has all the effects, the effects on, on the stall angle attack and stall speeds, uh, the effect on the control effectiveness, and all, all, all of the real aerodynamics that you get from icing. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Randy is right now flying the Twin Otter simulation with uh, ice on all the surfaces. He's starting off on an approach, he's, he's out about five miles in initial condition. And at this point, he's, he's pretty much flying flaps up normal speed. He's not seeing much of an effect. This is uh, one of the problems with ice, is where, where it comes in on this airplane that he causes a problem is when you go slow and start putting the flaps in. So right now, he's not noticing that he's got much difference. What the but as he gets closer to the airport and starts slowing down and putting the flaps down, you're going to notice his workload is going to go up quite a bit. The stick force is very large because the twin otter wants to have it, wants the tail stone. And he's going to be very close to it with the ice on. Uh, his margin is very low, so he's going to be very close to uh, tail stone. So he's going to have to fight it all the way down. And the stick forces, the pull forces are going to get very large. Uh, he's got 20 degrees of flaps right now, so his, uh, his force is going to be getting higher. And uh, you run out of trim yet, Randy? Uh, he's run out of trim right now. He can't trim the airplane any, anymore, so he's 
having to hold all the forces with his uh, with his arms, and uh, they're going to get very large on him. He's going to have to work very hard. He puts the flaps down further. He's got it down to 30 degrees of flaps now. So at this point, his workload's going up even more. Uh, he's having a hard time controlling the airplane, both in terms of his heading and, and, and uh, pitch attitude, as well as the airspeed. Trying to control all three is going to be almost impossible. Man. So he's got, he's got full flaps on right now. Uh, his strategy right now is to try to get it on the ground, obviously. But his workload is very, very high. Now normally, he's going he's to try to fly it. Normally, uh, the thing the pilot needs to do at this point is basically start pulling the flaps back up because his workload is so high, it's high and he's having to hold that. His chances of getting it on the ground uh, are, are very low compared to what being a normal, normal unice situation. So what we've got on here is is the amount of ice that would accumulate on the leading edge of the surface with a 22 and a half minute exposure to ice insulation. It's a classic double double horn shape on the on the uh, leading edges of the, of the surfaces. That's uh, that's the com that's common for that type of, of ice building. There's several different types of ice. But this particular one is what you would encounter in you know, fairly severe ice uh, situations with, with either no or inoperative uh, ice inspection. Aero TV is brought to you by From the mountains to the prairies to the landings that we love Garmin SBT Synthetic Vision Technology. He's working very hard. He's trying to keep get the airplane in. He's, he's basically getting into a, a, a pitch I.O. where he's having trouble holding it. He pitches up, control power is low, he overshoots, and he goes down and he's overshooting. So he's probably either going to stall the airplane or crash it to into the ground if he's not careful. Now he's pulling back. There he goes. Okay, he got the nose back up. He, knows he was pulling back very hard, and the airplane was still nosing over. Now he's stalling. <laughs> and he's going to plant the airplane. What happened was, he, with the, with the uh, workload that he had there, he just couldn't keep on top of it. And he was, he was fighting it. Uh, he was basically out of sequence, and it just got away from him. As amply demonstrated by the pilot here, struggling with ice is a critical scenario. Two feet off the ground, it's merely a lot of work. A little bit higher, it's dangerous and life-threatening. It's simulations and devices like this that can take something incredibly dangerous and prepare a pilot for it through solid knowledge and solid experience that doesn't come with the hazard that's usually associated with it. For Aero News and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.